Greetings and salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei. Today I'm back with a Power BI DAX tutorial where we're going to be looking at month on month change. Well, you can also apply this to quarters, days, and years, but we're going to be looking at month on month. Let me quickly show you how to do it. All right, so the data set we're going to be looking at portfolios, the portfolio holdings of value investors. I'm going to look here at, let's say, Charlie Munger. So you can basically see we got his portfolio at specific points in times. We got it for April 2022, May 2022, and June 2022. And we want to basically see what the change in the market value is for these three periods. So month on month change for Charlie. Did he make a profit? Did he make a loss? So let's start it out. So first thing that we do is you can see this table is um, already pulled in. This is pulled in from a spreadsheet. I'll include this in the video or in the links in the video. So first thing that I want you to look at is this portfolio date. Oh, it's already by default classified as a date. So what I recommend you do is you go into options and settings and options. You go to data load. I would recommend doing it globally, but let's just do it locally for this one. And we say time intelligence, auto date time, switch it off. I don't like this function. And now that's gone. Next thing that we need to do in order to enable time intelligence is to add a date table. I'm also going to include this file for you in the description below. You can just copy this code directly like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say data view and say new table. So it's going to open this DAX editor over here, this code over here and paste it in there. I'll quickly take you through it. So what it will basically do is it will actually go and it will create a date table for us based on our fact holdings, the dates in our fact holdings. You can see this is the perimeter there. So if you want to apply this to some of your code, just make sure you change this minimum year over there. So this will create a calendar table specifically for our data set. So when I say, okay, there we go. Now we have a calendar data set of years. A couple of things, let's format some things. So the date, I like to format my date as that. And because we're going to be using year month, I would recommend formatting year month to something like year month. So it looks like that. So just for easy readability. Next thing that we need to do is we need to mark this date table as a date table. So we're going to say um, under table tools, mark as date table, say mark as date table. And we select the column that says date and it says, okay. So that's quite an important step because this date table, just note that it's got a continuous series of dates so from the 1st of July that's the from our data set so from our min right there you can see every single day for the period until our maximum which would be March 2022 next thing is we need to connect the date table to the holding so we're going to go to model view and I'm just going to say our portfolio date will link to the date over there so it's a many to one relationship and I like to hide that all right so now we have our first set Cool. So if we look at the model, we got the dates filtering down to the holding. So let's start with a simple visual. We pull it in. I start with the matrix visual. And I'm going to say pull my portfolio codes in over there. So we have all the portfolios. Then from the dim holding date, take the year month and put that as columns. All right. So we have that. So now let's create some measures for the holding. So I'm going to say fact holdings. I want to create my first measure there. Say new measure. First measure we want to do is we want to look at the total market value. So we're going to say calculate sum and that would be from the fact holdings and that would be the value and that will give us our market value. The little thing, let's quickly format that to currency. Whoop. All right, so let's quickly drag the market value in there and presto. So now we have the market value. I don't like that totals row there because it doesn't really make sense to add it up. Just take that totals row off there. Okay, cool. So you can see, look at our friend Charlie. Charlie there, April, that was the holdings. May, that was the holdings. And in June, that was the holdings. So he's experienced some significant declines in holdings. All right, let's create the previous month holding. So say new measure. So for this, we're going to say calculate. Yeah. I want to calculate, I'm going to refer to my market value measure I just created because I want to still create the sum of the value, still do that calculation. But this time around, I'm going to use calculate table. Yeah. And I'm going to say to calculate table, hey, calculate table, let me just 
you can do it in two ways. We can say date add, date add, and I want to say date add to what? I want to add to my dim holding date. I want to add minus one month. So I want to go one month back. All right, close it up. And we're just going to call this market value previous month. What you could have also done is instead of using date add, I'm just going to go back there. You could have used the function called previous month. All right, that would also work. But you can also do previous day, previous quarter, previous year. So you can do the same thing there. If you wanted to do that, you can use that function as well. Just note that if for the date add, if I wanted to do the previous quarter, I would have just uh, specified quarter there, day, month or year there. And then with the minus. So this is one month back. If I make this a minus three, it will be three months back. That would be equal to a quarter. Excellent. Let's quickly do a test. I'm going to drag the previous month in there. All right, so let's quickly look at old Charlie. So for the month of June, there's Charlie. This is his current month. The previous month should be, you see that measure over there, should be 212. And there for the that one is 212. And for May, you can see going back, should be 258, 258. All right, so now that we have the market value of the current month and the previous month, what we want to do is we want to do the, cal the difference, the month on month difference between previous and current. We're going to say new measure. Yes, this one I'm going to do with variables. So I'm going to say variable one is market value current. And we just say there refer to our current market value. Cool. Variable number two, market value previous. And those are the measures we created before market value previous. Yes. And the next one I just call result, which is the actual calculation. That would be if not is blank. So basically when my current month is not blank and my previous month is not blank, then take the current month, subtract it from the previous month and close that bracket up and then return the result. And we're going to call this market value M O M. That's month on month. Say, okay. And let's format that as currency. Let's quickly do a sanity check. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it in there. Let's take old Charlie. So Charlie uh, from May it was 212. In April it was 258. That is a reduction of 46 million. From June it was 174 to 212. That's a reduction of 37 million. So that looks 100% correct. Excellent. Now the next thing we want to do is we now want to take that month on month and make it a percentage. What's the month on month percentage? So now I'm going to say measure, new measure. And this is simple. We're going to say divide, divide. What am I going to divide? I'm going to take the market value, market value month on month. And I'm going to divide that by the market value of the previous month. Yes. And if it is blank, I'm just going to say zero, otherwise return. And we're going to call this um, market value month on month percentage, right? And I'm going to format this as a percentage. Let's quickly take that market value out there. I'm just going to drop in the percentage there. And there you go. If we look at old Charlie, Charlie in May experienced a 17% decline and in June a 17.72% decline. So that's basically how you can do month on month amount difference and then month on month percentage difference. I hope that helps you. It really helped me a lot with solving some issues with my clients. And it's an easy recipe to apply for quarter to quarter, um, year to year, day to day. Well, BA Sensei signing out.